Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video. It's another puppy related video. You guys know that I have posted a lot about our golden retriever puppy, Cash, who is sitting right here. I know I watched so many of these videos on things to buy your puppy when it's your first puppy, things not to buy, things to do with training as it relates to potty training and house training and just things that really work. I think they're really helpful and honestly, it can be really overwhelming when you first get a dog and you're reading stuff online to figure out what you need. And I am by no means an expert, but I think that you do live and you learn and you learn as you go. And so I wanted to share all the things that we bought cash, things that we like. Also talking about things that I kind of regret buying. And then along the way, I'm gonna talk through how we potty trained him, how we house trained him, how we kind of tried to work on leash training. And I was originally gonna wait until he was about a year old to do this video, but I figured I'd go ahead and do it now just because I've been getting quite a few questions about these things. Everything is linked down below, but I do wanna say if you have a local pet store, I'd highly recommend going there first. I also just wanna say that you don't need everything that I'm sharing. Obviously, I talk a lot about living minimally and not having a lot. And I'm just gonna be honest, this is a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff we do use, but I don't think you have to have all of this stuff. I don't think it's necessary. I think just loving your pup and giving them the best life possible is enough. I'm also gonna have timestamps of everything down below. So if you have a specific section that you wanna skip to, because I imagine this is gonna be a little bit of a long video, you can just go ahead and skip to the section that you want to follow along with. So from the start, I just wanna talk about the people that I like to watch to learn about training. So before we got cash, there were quite a few people that I watched online and there are honestly so many free resources that you can access. A few of my favorites, one, Zach George, you've probably seen his videos if you looked at anything puppy related. He's a really awesome dog trainer. He does a lot of positive dog training, which is kind of the method we like to do with Cash. And that may not work for your dog. I think everyone's different. It depends on the dog. That worked for Cash. He loves affirmation. I think a lot of golden retrievers just love to be loved. I also really love Rachel Fusero. I think I'm saying her last name right. I love her videos too. She's very high energy, very cut to the chase. And I just I just think she's a really great resource again on kind of that positive dog training and she just has a lot of knowledge so i love to watch her videos so starting off with crate training crate training i think was one of the most important things for training cash if you don't know what crate training is it's essentially when you get a crate and you crate them when you're leaving you create them through the night and it's kind of their safe place i think a lot of people before i mean before i even thought about getting a dog i thought crate training was kind of cruel like oh you're putting your dog in a cage that's not very nice but dogs really are denning creatures. They like to have a space that's just theirs. It's kind of like when you have your own room, you want to have your own space and that's what it is for your dog. And so we knew we wanted to crate train cash from the get-go. And I think doing it from the get-go is the most important thing and sticking with it. Some things that helped us. So we just had a wire crate originally, one that we got off Amazon and it had a divider. So when he was bigger, we could just move the divider out. Now he has a crate that's bigger that also doubles as a travel crate. And so we still use it. We plan to use use it until he's maybe like a year old. I also just got a mat to put in there. So it was a comfy space for him, but we would feed him his food in there. So pretty much every meal we would feed him in the crate. So he associated it with food and it was a happy place for him. And anytime we would leave, so we'd only leave for a couple of hours. We would leave him with a Kong that just had frozen peanut butter in it or frozen plain yogurt, just so he knew that that was a happy place. It wasn't ever a place that we would put him when he did something bad, when he had an accident or anything like that, we would never stick him in the crate because we would never want it to be punishment for him. We also covered it with a blanket so it did feel more like a den. And he's also always slept in our room. I originally was gonna move him out into the living room, but for one, I don't really want his crate out here because it's not super cute. But I also like when he's in the room, if he ever has an upset stomach or something and needs to go out, I think it's helpful to just know what's going on. He's trying to destroy his bandana back there. <laughs> Especially when they're really young, it's helpful to have them in the room because they know that you're there and they feel a lot more comfortable when they're getting used to their crate. It's also helpful to set alarms whenever they are young and when they're trying to sleep in there because you want to make sure that you're taking them out when they have to go potty, but not because they're whining, because if they associate the whining with, I get out of the crate, they're gonna keep doing it. And so just being okay with not getting a ton of sleep those first couple of months 
and making sure that they get used to it. He got used to it really fast. I mean, it was only a few days before he was sleeping through the night. He didn't even have to really wake up to go to the bathroom. The next thing, and I would say this is the hardest thing, and that was potty training. This was especially true because we're in an apartment. It's a lot different than just letting your dog out the back in your backyard. I think he would have picked it up a lot faster if we had a yard. Potty training was definitely the most difficult thing, and I think my biggest tips are just to be extremely consistent with it. You have to take them out basically every hour, and I mean, we were taking him downstairs. We took him out every single hour, and it was a lot. We didn't want to use potty pads. We kind of used them as a preventative thing, but we weren't actively telling him to go on them because we didn't want him to get used to going inside. And honestly, it took probably a good five months for him to be fully potty trained, maybe even up until he was six months old. And he still has had one accident since then, I think. Keep them on a schedule, so just feed them at the same time. Make sure you're taking them out at the same time. I know it's really hard if you work full time, but I think you would actually have to get a dog walker, someone to take them out because it is a full-time job potty training a dog when they're, you know, three months, four months old. Take them out to the same spot too. That's something that I would do is just take him to the same spot and I would say something like go potty, go potty, and then reward him when he went just so he associates that with good behavior. And now I just have to say go potty and he'll go. And it's such a blessing because I know those accidents, those first few months, you can't get down on yourself either. I would get so frustrated when I felt like it just wasn't clicking with him, but you kind of just have to keep going, never get frustrated. It's honestly your fault when they go. It's not really their fault because they can't control their bladders. They needed to be taken out more. And so I would just say, take them out as much as possible. If they're sniffing around, if they're acting a little bit anxious take them out we use this spray this is just the nature's miracle stain and odor remover we would use this anytime he went just so he wouldn't sniff it all the time and when they sniff it they kind of know to do it again there so you want to make sure that you clear the scent and for dog poop bags bags that i really like i see these everywhere they're just the earth rated ones we just have this huge box and this has lasted i think this is the second one we've gone through but it just has a ton of different bags in it and i really like these i find they're big enough another thing that we did for house training was actually use this bitter apple spray. I found this was really helpful for when he was biting on furniture because the biting stage I'll talk about in a second, but it was really intense. And if you have furniture, that's nice. I'd recommend just spraying this. Obviously you still have to teach them not to bite furniture because when they go over to someone else's house, they're just going to destroy their furniture if it's not sprayed. But that was kind of nice when I just needed to get things done and I didn't want him biting things. It's not harmful for them. They just don't like the taste of it. And another product just for having a dog in general he is allowed on our couch i love when he's on the couch with us so i don't really care i got this pill remover and because he has his nails it can scratch up the couch and i really love our couch and so i just do this and it kind of depills the couch surprisingly we have a white couch and i don't feel like it's that dirty it still looks pretty clean to me but i think this is nice for getting the scratch marks off as far as puppy biting goes i think you just have to accept that your dog is going to be biting everything they're teething there are things you can do that help but honestly Honestly, it's just kind of one of those things that you have to get through and once they get older I do think they grow out of it for the most part with him something that I liked with Zach George He talked about not actually eliminating the biting and trying to cut it out completely because that is how they play with other dogs They need to learn the degree of biting that's play and the degree of biting that is not acceptable So when he would bite us when we were playing We would just say ow when it got to too much and he would usually stop and if he didn't stop we would remove ourselves we would just go into a different room because they want to be around you they want to have fun and so they're going to do whatever it takes to be around you for the most part redirecting to toys honestly did not really help we would try that but for the most part he just wanted to bite flesh and so that helped and now i think he plays really well with other dogs he's not an aggressive dog at all and that's been really helpful socialization was a big thing that we wanted because i have nieces and nephews and i knew he'd be around a lot of kids we are around a lot of other dogs in our apartment building and so i know a lot of people actually think being in an apartment with a dog isn't that great but i love it because we have a very small dog park and he will see the same dogs all the time he'll see new dogs and he got used to them as soon as he could be out there with his shots and he had so much fun and i think that was helpful just getting your puppy around a lot of different circumstances a ton of different noises that's another reason why I like being in the city and more of a downtown area because they're around those noises they get used to it I also love when we get to take them out into the country and has space though so I feel like any situation you have you just make it work but try to put them around as many things as possible I think with kids 
jumping is probably the thing that's the hardest right now because he gets really excited and i think we kind of have egged it on because we get really excited around him which is our fault and i wouldn't recommend and he knows with smaller dogs not to be super crazy and he knows with kids not to be super crazy but i do think jumping is the thing that we're trying to eliminate another thing that was important was when he was eating we would try to really kind of handle him so we would kind of pull his tail a little bit we would play with his ears we would play with his paws we would even feed him out of our hands because we never wanted him to resource guard where they get kind of aggressive when people are messing with them when they're eating because i know that's a big thing that can happen and obviously that's kind of like in their nature so you have to make sure that they know to just trust you and trust other people when they're eating and also just creating them even if you are home all the time still creating them for a couple of hours so they don't get separation anxiety i mean honestly he loves to be with us and i know he does get sad when we leave but to make sure he doesn't actually howl and bark when we leave when he was pretty young we would start leaving him just for shorter increments every time so it would be 10 minutes when he could see us and then it was 30 minutes and then it was an hour so you work up to it but then once it gets to that two hour mark just making sure that's consistent so they don't have separation anxiety actually someone in our dog park was the one who told me to do this because she said i can't leave without him going crazy so i wish i would have left him more now we have a lot of products that i'm going to share so as far as walking goes and everything outdoors i'll share some of the leashes and things that we use with him he thinks he's going for a walk now and he's sitting right in front of my camera we've gone through so many different harnesses and collars and i know there's so many out there we prefer to use a harness just because honestly he walks a lot better with this this thing was a miracle this is the pet safe easy walk harness i love this harness because it really helps with pulling he doesn't pull as much when this is on we had a blue nine harness when he was really young but until then we just used this and i just have his akc tag on here and then i have his other collar which is just from pet smart this is nothing fancy this just has his normal tag that we got from pet smart and their maker we only use this when he needs to have a collar on. So when he's at my parents' house in case he like goes outside. Leash walking and pulling is the number one thing that we're working on right now because he's not perfect at it. And then for his leash, I love this leash. It's just a rope leash. And this has been really nice for walking. I don't know why it makes it easier, but it's a really good leash. So we use this. We actually went on a little weekend trip and I used this for swimming and hiking. It's just a longer lead. And it's also really nice because you can practice the recall with this, but there's still a <laughs> attached onto the leash but i really liked having this in that situation too and in our car when we travel with him we have this car seat cover from amazon that i also love because it protects your seats it's almost like a little hammock that goes in the back that was really helpful too to have and on walks i know a lot of people have specific fanny packs for training but i just use a fanny pack that i have and i just hook this around like my chest and I keep treats in the front so when we're walking, we can practice walking better on the leash and that's really helpful to have. But I don't think you need to have a special pack or anything. I just use that because I think it's easy to use and I already have it. But honestly, leash walking, I don't have a ton of things. This is one of the big reasons why we're going to training because we want to be better about it. But I think teaching them how to heal when you're walking, I think teaching look at me so when you're walking, you get eye contact with them but he loves other dogs and he definitely loves playing with other dogs. And I think the dog park probably hasn't helped in this area. I know a lot of people are anti-dog park, but I still think it's a good area for him. He's not awful on a leash, he's just not perfect. But we're definitely getting better at loose leash walking. I also just think he's a puppy, he's gonna grow out of it. So food is an area that there are a lot of mixed opinions on. And right now we are feeding him a kibble brand that our vet recommends, but I'm not opposed to switching him to a raw diet down the road or something like that. Just while he's a puppy, I wanna make sure he's getting everything that he can out of his food, but vets are gonna tell you different things than people on the internet are, raw, grain-free. So I just think you should do the best that works for your dog. He has no problem liking any food because he loves absolutely everything. He eats everything. I think that meal times are such a great time to train. And so a lot of times when he was really young, we would use his food to actually train him and some things that we like to use are one this slow feeder bowl this slows him down when he's eating and it makes it a little bit harder so he doesn't get bloated because he eats so fast we also love using these puzzle feeders and i think you don't need all of these things but it is really good for them to use their senses to find food so you just hide the food in here i think a lot of people are always confused when i use these like what is this 
And then this one we also use where they have to lift up the tabs and everything. He kind of knows how to use all those though now. He's pretty smart. Another thing that I really like is just this snuffle mat. So you hide the food in here and this will keep him occupied for 30 minutes still, even though he's done it multiple times. And then you can hide it in these flaps, but I love this. I use this a lot and then you just stick it in the wash. So for all of his meals, we'll basically feed him out of one of these, but I also just have these bowls, which I think are really cute if you want cute bowls. I love these ceramic bowls that I got from Etsy. I think they're really nice and minimal. This is just a bit too small now for him and we don't really use these as much, but his water is in one of those and it's just back there. So he always knows where it's at. Something that we also did was teach him how to leave it with his food. So every time we feed him, if we're not actually doing tricks with him, we'll just tell him to sit, we'll tell him to leave it. And then when we say, okay, that's when he can eat. Leave it. Okay. Again, going back to the resource guarding and then also teaches them how to kind of resist those urges and just trust you more. I also got these and they're just collapsible bowls. And I love these because they also have hooks on them. So you can just use them when you're hiking or something with the keychain. For his training treats, I usually just keep them in this glass container I got from Home Goods. And in here we just have these freeze dried treats. So they're just one ingredient. I'll link my favorite ones down below. He honestly got used to them though, so he doesn't love them as much anymore, but he really likes these. And I got these from Trader Joe's. They're just straight up freeze dried, so they just have one ingredient, which I like. I don't have this with me because we left it when we were traveling, but Kongs are so amazing. You freeze something in there, we'll do just peanut butter that's plain or plain yogurt, or honestly, you can put anything in there that's safe for them and freeze it. It'll keep them entertained for a while. I love having a Kong. This is kind of a toy, but whenever he was younger, we would hide treats in this ball and have him roll it around and it kind of teaches him to sniff. He has to use the senses to pick him up and this would keep him entertained too. It was a little bit annoying, but did keep him entertained. And this thing right here is also a lifesaver. This is just a lick mat and we would put peanut butter in here again plain yogurt and if we had to bathe him we would put that in the bath so he would stay in the bath better because again we're in an apartment we don't have a hose so we would use this or even if we just wanted to get things done and he was a lot younger we would do one of these and that would keep him entertained for a while so i love this i use this every single day to this day so i'd highly recommend this and we also like to feed him pretty much other things that we eat so carrots strawberries watermelon there's a lot of fruit that's safe for dogs so anything like that and then we also feed him bully sticks because I know there's a lot of like controversy with raw hides, but bully sticks are a lot better because they digest better and they don't splinter off. I don't have any because he's eaten all of his because he loves them. So now on to grooming. I'm gonna go through this one pretty quickly because this video is so long. These are my favorite dog wipes because they're the most natural. These are the earth rated dog wipes. And because we're in an apartment and he does go to the dog park, we like to wipe him off when he comes inside. So we'll use these. Obviously he's a golden retriever and he sheds a lot. That's something that is true. So we use this brush. I love this because it's self-cleaning. So you just push it out and then you brush them and then you can wipe the hair off and it's just super nice to use. So I like this one a lot. When he was a puppy, we really wanted him to get used to being groomed. So we would do all these things when he was really young. He still doesn't love having his nails trimmed and we just decided we're not gonna trim them ourselves because it kind of makes us nervous. So he got groomed for the first time a month ago, I would say, no, a few weeks ago, honestly. And he did really great. And I think it's because we tried to do all this stuff when he was younger, but we like to use this paw wax. My sister Jamie actually uses this with my parents' dog, Roxy, but it's just this wax that moisturizes their paws, but it also protects them from like hot pavement because we're in a city. These are some ear wipes that I love to use. They're just the Pet MD Aloe Vera and Eucalyptus. This is just to clean his ears. These are the nail clippers that we said we were gonna use, but never use, but I'll link these in case you need some. I know that these are popular. I don't honestly have a good puppy shampoo that I like to use because I wanna get one that's more natural. If you have any recommendations, feel free to link them. I don't wanna recommend the one we have because it's not super natural or anything. And for brushing his teeth, when he was a puppy, we would use one of those finger toothbrushes because it was just a lot easier, but now he just uses a puppy toothbrush and for his toothpaste, we use the Petrodex Advanced Dental Care Toothpaste. Toothpaste is really hard because they pretty much all have bad reviews. This one I thought had the best reviews for what I could tell and he really likes the taste of it, but it doesn't smell great because it smells like beef. I also have this waterless shampoo because we don't like to give him too many baths. So it's not super great 
for their skin, but this is nice in between washes because it makes him smell good. So it's just like a spray you spray on him. This isn't really grooming, but we also give him next guard and heartworm medicine. We get this through his vet, but that's just for worms and then also fleas and ticks. And the last section is toys. And this is honestly the section where I would just say you don't need to go crazy. He loves his toys, but he honestly has way too many and they're all over the place. And I'm gonna share the ones that he really likes that I think are worth buying. The first one is actually something a subscriber sent, but this is his lamb chop. He loves it. It squeaks, it's super annoying, but he loves this toy a lot. This box he really likes that also squeaks. Rope toys are good for teaching how to play tug of war. And then obviously tennis balls and that kind of thing. I think it's easy to have way too many toys, so I'm not gonna recommend too many. And that is pretty much everything I have to say. I definitely could go more in depth on the training stuff, but like I said, I'll have everything that I shared linked down below if you guys wanna check out anything. Let me know some of your favorite dog products for anyone who is a new dog owner. I think it would be really helpful. And yeah, if you want to see more Cash content, he does have an Instagram. It's just at Cash Gothier if you want to check him out. And you can also just subscribe because he's basically in all my videos all the time because he is the best ever. But thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye friends. Bye.